What's up, Wave Makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Nuclear secrets! And we have another Top Fails video today. Woohoo! I really don't have much to say. I don't really have an intro at all. But I do have a baby up here who should be downstairs with his dad. What's up, dude? If you haven't been keeping up with what's been going on on my channel, last week I did like a live stream. Are you coming up here? So this lady, I figure I'll put her first in the video um, just because it's probably the longest video we have to react to today and it's also very interesting so this lady is the one I did a live stream about this is the same lady who also basically threatened to dox Aaron B's so I got mad and I made <laughs> the live stream about her it was like three and a half hours long so if you haven't watched it like I don't blame you because it's really long but the replay is up if you want to watch it I thought it was really good watch it on 1.5 speed or something I don't know this weekend this past weekend Elamir had their like grand opening event and I'm pretty sure I talked about this in another video but they had a tour of the factory that all the distributors had to get tickets for. They were free tickets from what I understand, but a lot of them, including this lady, had to travel out there to go and she bought a plane ticket to travel across the country to go to this thing so obviously there was cost out of pocket for a lot of these people but okay whatever so this lady and her team goes on the tour of the factory out in texas what do you think they did after the tour of the factory hmm should i tell you or should we just watch it together i think we should just watch it together i got some timestamps here i'm not gonna show you the whole live because it's irrelevant but for now we can just watch the dumb fuckery that went on while this woman and her team were out in Texas touring the Elamir factory. So yeah, I, I have to get my makeup on, get ready to go to the airport. Hey, good morning, Miss Amy. How are you? Amy, you want to see it? Do you want to see it? I'm going to show you guys something here in a minute. Mm-hmm. So what we did yesterday, quick rundown, quick, quick, quick. Went to LaCour Enterprises here in Texas. Um, we had already done our live tour the day before, but yesterday was the official ribbon cutting launch for Elamir. For all you out there that thought it wasn't going to happen, ha, 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 it did, okay? It happened. We are opening up to customers on a limited basis, hmm, thousand orders a day, every day, and then we will go full-blown capability by September 15th. First of all, she's like, y'all thought it was never gonna happen. We were never gonna open up for customers. And it's like, did anyone ever say we didn't think that they were gonna actually open up for customers? <laughs> like, I don't know if we ever actually said that. I mean, we've been trying to get them shut down, yeah. But like, I don't think any of us were in denial that it would happen. <laughs> but yeah, so she mentions here that Elamir is about to start opening a thousand orders a day until I think she said, what, September 15th? 15th. So, okay, like that makes sense. I think from a business plan standpoint, that's fine. But like who wants to bet that the only people who are going to be like buying these are going to be buying them in large quantities and they're all <laughs> going to be the distributors. I bet. I fucking bet. Because right now, yeah, they, they basically have only gotten the boxes that they ordered, like, during their sign-up. So, to, it's my understanding that, like, none of these people had large quantities of it. But, you know, the moment they're, like, a thousand boxes a day, they're all gonna be waiting, <laughs> filling up their carts and spending a shitload of money. So, I just, I guarantee that'll happen because the distributors are the customers. We know this. A lot of them are going to be buying in bulk because they're like selling trial packs. They will make like little packs of five of the strips and sell them I think for $25, which is crazy. Five days worth of a vitamin for $25 sounds wild, wildly expensive. And also I feel like as far as the testimonies go, there's a lot of like discrepancies. That's a good word. Yeah, that's the good word I was thinking of. <laughs> because like a lot of these people are like, oh yeah, you feel it instantly. It's instant impact. But then there are other people who I've seen be like oh you won't feel the effects until you've been taking it for 30 days and then there are other people who are like it took me a week or to, you know lots of discrepancies there and it really honestly doesn't make sense that it can go from a span of instant impact to a month you know so that's just sketchy to me in the first place but if that were the case like you can sell these trial packs 
packs to people, five strips for $25. And like, I guess you can't really guarantee that they'll do anything. And then you gotta be like, well, you didn't feel anything, so I guess you just have to take the product longer. And then they're gonna buy more trial packs or they're gonna invest in a full box, which is $90. It's very predatory. I, I definitely see the sales tactic there, the money making, the profit, all of that. I, I see the potential for all of that there, but it is severely overpriced. $25 for five days, that is wild. $90 for 30 days is also wild, but I digress. As soon as those thousand orders are pushed through, shutting down. So if you want a box as a customer, you better get your happy hind in on there and order it because it will sell out. It's not gonna take an hour to sell a thousand boxes. It'll take maybe 10 minutes. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's what I'm thinking. You upgraded. Well, good. I did too. I got mine. I got my seven boxes yesterday. Don't think I didn't. Seven boxes. She got seven boxes, which obviously she's not gonna take for herself. She's essentially inventory hoarding, but she's going to be, like I was saying earlier, be divvying them up for trial packs, which from a profit standpoint, you know, is smart because you'll make $150 back instead of 90. And then obviously minus whatever you paid for the box. So yeah, she didn't, buy all that for herself. But still, if she bought all seven of those boxes at full price, she would have spent $630, which is pretty big investment. It's a lot of money, but I guess you could say that she'll make her money back as long as she sells all of those trial packs, which I think is her plan. And oh, let me show you the packaging. I know some of y'all have seen it, but some of y'all have not. <clears throat> Here's the great thing about why I love to show up at events. Oh, cause you get them right on the spot. Huh, Johnny on the spot. Yeah, but you, you had to buy a plane ticket to get to that event. So she's like, almost like making people feel like there's some FOMO there. Like, mm, should have been at the event. You'd have way more Elamir like I have. And it's like, you had to pay for that. You didn't get it for free. Also, you had to pay for a plane ticket to fly to Dallas. It is going to be great for Canada. We are going to be going to Canada November 1st, kids. So all you Canadians that's been dying and wanting your, your stuff. Great. Straight rips it's coming but these look at that it just folds right up boom how cute is that so i got my seven packs of that and then i got my sleeves too i got all these sleeves mm -hmm, right here for my little strips to send out my samples and um, i don't know if you can order them online we have the option to get them there I would go in and look Amy in the back office and see, but I don't know that you can purchase them on there. We had to purchase them at the event. Oh, okay, so that was one question I was gonna ask. I'm pretty sure she's talking about those little sleeves that she said she bought, or I think she said she got them just to be able to put the strips in and then mail in the trial packs or whatever. Uh, I was wondering if she had to pay for those too, and she just said, oh, you had to be at the event to buy them. And it's like, okay, so that's even more money that she's investing in having to ship that out. And then plus like, what is she charging for shipping? You know, there's all, there's all these things that you have to consider too when it comes to what kind of profit they're making making off of this. But anyway, she hasn't even gotten to the part, the real big fail here that I really wanted to show you, but I think it's coming up here. So we went to downtown McKinney and shopped for just a hot minute because we had, we had a plan. We knew we needed to get somewhere. And there were several of us that wanted to get a tattoo. Huh. So you know, a lot of companies have their logos and they have all their things. And I almost got one in my last company. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad I didn't, but I almost did. I'm sorry. I, I, ha I have to just... <clears throat> Griffin, please, please calm down back there. <laughs> She was just saying like, I wanted to get a tattoo of my old company. Oh, I think she was in Vela Vita, which I put in my deep dive pictures of people getting the Vela Vita tattoo, like a lot of people did. So it was kind of like a big part of being in Vela Vita. Seems to be a pretty big influence there, but um, she's like, oh, I almost got it, but I'm glad I didn't. And then she turns around and yeah, spoiler alert, she got a tattoo. Her and a lot of people on her team got Elamir tattoos. Yeah. So first of all, it's like, tell me it's a cult without saying it's a cult. Second of all, Elamir has been open for, so it's like the middle of August now, like not even two months. You don't know the future of this. You don't know what's going to happen, where things are going to go, how successful or unsuccessful you will be. You haven't had time to commit yourself to this company in the way that you just committed a part of your body to it forever. Like that's so strange to me. Like, I don't know how long she was in Velavita, but it was probably 
probably longer than she's been in Elamir, and she's just like totally not regretting it at all. Now, she didn't get Elamir's logo. I don't even know if they have like an actual logo, but I'll just, I'll let you see for yourself. Leave people better. That's what we're about, is leaving people better. So, I found that, I, we went to the shop. I said, this is what we all, a lot of us wanted. And uh, he's like, well, do you know what font you want? And I was like, well, I have a thing in my head, but I, I, you know. So I looked up some stuff and I found a font that I loved. And I'm like, can you do this one? And we all liked it. And let me show you my tattoo. It's on my forearm right here. Like it's not ginormous, but it is so daggone pretty. Look at this. First of all, when I saw this, I messaged Aaron and I was like, you better be being good back there. I was like, she got a tattoo and it says leave people better. Cause I guess it's like an Elamir motto. And she was like, no, no, that is a motto from Prove It. They're straight up stealing it from Prove It. I guess that's something they used to say in Prove It all the time. That and what people are also pointing out. Well, first of all, like the font is cute. That's fine. She picked a nice font. The tattoo is fine, whatever. It's not a stupid looking tattoo. It's only stupid because it's for your fucking yellow strip cult. That's why it's stupid, but anyway. People are pointing out it's crooked. Like, look at this. And I thought at first it was the way that she was turning her arm because like, like I have Edward, but if I like, I don't know, he turns with my skin kinda. So I'm like, oh, it's probably just because she's turning her arm or something. But now that I'm really looking at it, guys, I'm pretty sure it's crooked, but it's crooked enough to be like intentional, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and then I'm like, why would you do it that way? Why? Yeah. Yeah, what? 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 Uh, huh? That's how I feel too. It gets worse though. Isn't that pretty? It says leave people better. I just absolutely love it. So I got my leave people better on my forearm. I love it. It's so pretty. I can't believe I did it. My husband even loves it. Mm-hmm. I said, babe, what do you think? He said, honey, I think it's beautiful. You go right ahead. You go right ahead and you do you. So that's what I did. <clears throat> so we all got a boatload of us got tattoos leave people better and I wanted it where I could see it like I'm looking at it all the time well see the way she's looking at it there it looks straight but when she had her arm out like this it was like sideways for something that's like such a straight line maybe having it on your arm wasn't the best place, but whatever. It's her body, her tattoo. That's great. I don't, I still don't, I don't think it looks bad, like from a aesthetic standpoint, but it does at a lot of angles look like it's just straight up crooked. I gotta get some stuff to put on it because obviously I'm at the hotel. So when I get in to Ohio, I'll stop and get some stuff on the way home, but. She hasn't been putting Aquaphor on it <laughs> or some kind of tattoo healing balm. Like that's what you're supposed to do. It's probably in so much pain right now. <laughs> If, if she got a tattoo and then did nothing else to it except maybe wash it with soap and water, it's gonna just get so dry and painful. And then like, I feel like because the lines on her tattoo are so thin, I feel like letting it dry out like that is gonna make it look bad as it's healing. So I don't know, but it's crazy to me that she got a tattoo and I guarantee the people at the tattoo shop were like, hey ma'am, you need to go buy some Aquaphor and put it on your tattoo, blah, 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 for aftercare. I'm sure they gave her like an aftercare care sheet. From what I understand, the way she's talking about it, it seems like it's her first tattoo, so you would have thought that they would go over that with them. Maybe not, but like, just think about getting a tattoo and then go almost two days, maybe even more, without putting Aquaphor on it. Ow! Just freaking ow, dude! Why would you do that to yourself? I'm just gonna say it right now. There was this fella that came in there. Mm-hmm. All the people that came in did not know what to think about all these cute little Cute little girls. This place was a hopping place. Like there was busy, busy people would just come. They'd come in and see all of us women. They'd be like, oh my gosh, y'all here for a bachelor party? No. So the one dude kept coming back and we were still there. But okay, I have to pause this. My son just took his diaper off. Hold on. Where are your pants? This is why I don't let him up here while I'm filming anymore because he's just too big. Back in the day when he was just a little guy, wasn't as hard. I could strap him to me and just hang out, but now, mm-mm. <laughs> Yeah, mom life is difficult. Anyway, sorry to interrupt because the story that she's about to tell is good. He was easy on the eyes, if you know what I mean. He was a little easy on the eyes. And then he asked about our network marketing, what we do. And somebody just said, honey, she probably makes more in one month than you made all year. <laughs> 
She goes, oh, oh, don't say that. Not, not in a month. No. The audacity. Who goes into someone else's place of work? Well, I'll tell you who Karens do. Who goes into someone else's place of work and goes, I made more money this month than you make in the entire year. That's rude. That's extremely rude. Tacky. No class there at all. Read the room, sister. That's not even the worst of it, though. It gets worse. But anyway, she's talking about this whole thing where she's like, oh, he was just so interested in our network marketing. It's like, no, he wasn't. You guys were trying trapped in a tattoo studio together. You both were probably sitting in chairs near each other. Couldn't go anywhere. You had a needle in your arm. Like, where is he gonna go? He can't escape. So I guess the only thing you can do is just be nice, right? So yeah, we just talk shop and, I, and he didn't care about it. He was all interested. Yeah, I'm sure. So we gave him a sample, but nobody got his information. I said, here's what's gonna happen. I'll call that tattoo shop tomorrow and I'll be like, listen, we was all them crazy women in there yesterday. We gave a sample to your customer who we know is a repeat customer and we need to make sure that he's gonna be able to order this again. So we need to get his information so we can send him some contact information. We are going to send him some contact information. Yeah, you heard that right. So um, their plan, first of all, I feel like if you are a network marketing professional, one of the first things you should be doing to potential clients or recruits is getting their contact information. Even if it's just like their Instagram handle or something like, wouldn't that be the first thing you kind of ask for? Get their name, look them up on Facebook. I don't know. She's like, oh, we didn't do any of that. Girl, I don't think you're very good at your job. <laughs> but not only that, then she goes, well, darn. You know, we all kind of messed up there, but don't worry. I'm going to call the tattoo shop and ask them for their customer's contact information. What? Dude, the audacity of her to think that this is like just totally okay. It's fine. This is normal, right? People do this. Um, no, it's not normal. And I think if the tattoo shop were to give you their customer's information, I don't know if that's illegal, but it's certainly unethical. They would be stupid to do that because they are going to lose a customer. That customer's never going back there dude if he knows that his privacy can be infringed like that but no this lady is just like oh well clearly i am the queen of the karens a queen of the world and everyone bows down to me and does what i ask them to so therefore this tattoo shop is going to give me this guy's phone number jesus christ oh my god please i just i'm hoping that the tattoo shop employees are gonna be like um no <laughs> like we actually can't do that man <laughs> anyway that was the whole story from her but one thing i do want to mention before we move on to the rest of our top MLM fails I did that live and up until that point she was so mean to Aaron and to Tish uh, Tish from Echo Echo on YouTube another anti MLMer she was so mean like in not just mean just like rude like fucking doxing Aaron making fun of Aaron for how much she paid for her house like weird shit like that making fun of the way she makes her faces and ad hominem any attack that you could possibly think of that this woman could have thrown at Aaron she threw at her and Tish too. She said Tish called her evil and I was like, Tish messaged me and she was like, no I never called her evil. <laughs> so it's like okay, so you're just making shit up to make her look bad. So she had no problem bitching and moaning about two I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but two smaller creators. And then here I am <laughs> I show up and I rip her a new one for <laughs> over three hours. And um, what I've been calling my morning due diligence on this woman, cause she goes live a lot. So this morning I went to her Facebook because I'm like, she's definitely gonna talk about me. She's 100% gonna talk about me. And she kind of did, but I'm not gonna show it here because basically she's backing off. She's like, someone else made a video and I've watched her other videos before. And then she's like, she actually made a lot of good points. Like she didn't say anything mean about me. She didn't even talk shit about my green lipstick dude, which is shocking to me. No, she just kind of was like, we just have to learn to coexist with these people. I'm like, did I chase her off? I think I did. She clearly watched some of it because she brought up the whole toilet paper MLM thing, which was just a goofy little thing we were talking about. And uh, yeah, she had to have listened and realized that the things I was saying made like logical sense. And you can't argue with that. You can't argue her flawed logic against anti MLM like facts and statistics and just generally knowing how these companies work like you can't really argue that well plus I'm sassy as fuck so anyway she's basically saying that she's just gonna learn to coexist with that well she said we have to learn to coexist together and I'm like no we do not you have to learn to coexist with us but we are going to keep doing this because that's the whole point of what we're doing we're trying to make it so we don't have to coexist with you people and then your companies just get shut down that's the point that's what we're trying to do so I don't think we'll be hearing much more from this lady I'm fine with not watching her lives <laughs> to see 
see if she talks about me or not, but I'm sure plenty of you guys will tell me if she does. Anyway, we can move on from her. I know that was kind of long, but I wanted to put that at the top of the video here. Let's move on to our next top MLM fail. I could have went to school to be a doctor, doctor. but I dropped out and chose to be a baller. With her commissions in her multi-level marketing company, which I'm not sure what company she's in, but she's basically saying, I made more than a doctor doing this silly side hustle, basically. Well, I mean, I, I guess it's not a side hustle for her anymore. Way to like talk people out of being doctors. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty sure doctors are very important to have in our society. And it's probably not the best idea to go running around being like, hey, I sell shampoo or whatever the fuck she sells or essential oils or whatever. And I made half a million dollars last year. What did you make, doc? Oh, only 250,000? Oh, <laughs> should have joined Monet. You know what I'm saying? It's just so weird and so strange to brag about this. Here is one more that I thought was particularly gross. <laughs> Just saying, if you wanna know who your friends are, start a business because guaranteed your friends will not be your clients, but your clients will absolutely become your friends. Truth. That wink at the end. Okay, that's unusual. There's just so much to unpack in this little like 10 second clip. Okay, so you're in a network marketing biz. I think she's with paparazzi actually. I'm just basing it off of her hashtags. Doesn't matter. Anyway, she's like, start your own business and your friends aren't gonna be your friends anymore. Okay, listen, starting your own MLM biz is not like starting an actual small business. Like I happen to know plenty of people who have gone off and started their own small business after leaving MLMs and guess what? They have way more support than they did before when they were in their MLM. It's not because your friends don't wanna be your friend. It's because you're in a cult and your friends don't wanna to contribute to it. It's because your friends know better. And if all your customers become your friends, like that's just weird too in that way. I mean, maybe that happens in like very little circumstances. That's not usual. Usually you should separate like work from home, you know? You should have your personal life and your work life and they should be totally separate. That's just like healthy relationship with your work. 101. <laughs> okay, so this one is probably going to upset some people. So I'm going to go ahead and put a trigger warning here. Um, if you need to skip through this, go ahead and skip to the timestamp I put below. Letting go of trauma and abuse with essential oils. Trauma life. Young living makes trauma life. And then Sarah. Sarah stands for sexual and ritual abuse. Young living has two oils, one called trauma life and the other one called Sarah. What the fuck? I don't know why I'm so surprised that they have something like this, but it's still shocking. Like, I'm sorry. It's shocking. Anyway, we can, let's finish this video real quick. And she's applied trauma life behind the ears. Apply Sarah to sacral chakra. Share, save, share, be gentle with yourself. Follow self-care plus essential. Okay, listen, if this kind of stuff helps you get over traumatic events and stuff, great. As long as you're not hurting anyone else with it. But to sit here on social media and be like, these things that I sell helped me to get over my trauma. That's so manipulative and so gross. And it's not just on the distributor at that point. It's on Young Living for making blends that are called Trauma Life and Sarah. Dude, let me just read the caption to you here too because it gets worse. Emotional trauma from accidents, losing loved ones, assault, and abuse can get stuck in our mind and body, causing physical and emotional stress. When we are able to release this stress and uproot the trauma, we can live healthier, happier lives. Sarah is a blend of oils that stands for what I told you it stood for and the blend. This blend helps to unlock trauma, such as physical and emotional abuse. What? How? Literally how? Like, where, where are the receipts? Where is any sort of study or proof that any essential oil, let alone the blend of these, but that any essential oil can just get you over trauma like this? It's really disgusting. Have you tried these blends? I have found them incredibly helpful for processing and letting go of past trauma for myself, my massage clients, my friends, and my family. I gotta see how much these oils are. Okay, Sarah is almost $40. It's $39.14. And then Trauma Life apparently is only available to Young Living brand partners. So you can't even, so you're gonna sit here and be like, you're gonna prey on people who have had some kind of trauma that they're trying to get over there in their life and put it all over your body and your face or whatever and be like, this helped me, but you have to join Young Living to get it. Ooh. 
food just like dangling it in front of them that's so gross i mean 100 percent. if one person saw that and they were like shit if those essential oils can help me move on from my past trauma then I guess I need to find out how to get it. And then they're gonna send her a message and go, hey, send me a link to where I can buy trauma life. And she's gonna go, oh, sorry. If you wanna get over your trauma with this essential oil, then you need to join my team. It's unreal, unbelievable. Well, wait now, there's two different websites and since they're both youngliving.com. Anyway, this one says that it retails for almost $75, which is price gouging in and of itself, predatory there too. Oh, okay, this is the, the Europe website. So in America, you can buy it without being a distributor, but if you're in Europe, then um, no, you sorry, you gotta be a distributor if you wanna get over your trauma with Young Living. That's really cute, that's really great. Oh, how sickening. While we are on the topic of essential oil, Oils. Let's just look at how nasty this one is. How did I build a six-figure income with four kids? I was sure to include them in the journey. Every step of the way. I showed up where I could and with other mamas and babies on their hips. We set goals and intentions together. We cast visions together. <laughs> And when I hit a goal, it was because we did it together. Oh my god. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Obviously, I had a blur filter over all of this because there are obviously young children involved. But, like, this just screams indoctrination to me. Start them at a young age believing that they need these essential oils to function in life. Like, literally, if you are dedicating them to young living right out the gate, because there was a picture in there where one of the kids was rubbing essential oil on one of the baby's feet. It's so messed up, dude. That baby is just gonna grow up thinking that's a normal part of life, and it's not. Like, I feel like you are setting your kids up to kind of just have, like, a lifetime of confusion. Like, they're gonna go out and be like, I thought you needed essential oils to do these things. <laughs> and it's like, turns out your parents just indoctrinated you. And probably, let's be honest, probably used them. Well, it looks like, based on this video, she did use them as kind of a marketing tactic. It's just, it's sick. It's really sick. These are kids. These are children, dude. And, like, do any of her kids have health issues? I bet one of them has asthma or something. Like, and I only say that because, like, we've seen time and time again with these households that have kids and a ton of essential oils that a lot of the time they end up having some sort of allergy issue or asthma that, like, kind of clears up when, when essential oils are removed from the equation. But these parents would never. They would never. They're like, no, no, the only thing that helps is the essential oil. It makes me so fucking mad, dude. Videos like this just really grind my gears. All right, here's another one. For three easy payments of doing the damn work, you can get exactly what you want. Let's go. This is obviously something we hear from multi-level marketing scammers all the fucking time. Oh, they didn't make money? It's because they didn't put in the work. When in reality, that's not the case. MLMs are a game of luck, really. Depends on the timing that you got in. It depends on the network you have built. Are you part of a church? Are you part of a sorority? I don't know. What is your social network like? Do you have a social media following? Like, there's a lot of things that go into someone putting in work. When you can kind of just be like a nobody from a small town who's never been on Instagram a day in their life and try to start selling this shit and be like, oh, who do I sell to? No one, like, I'll start cold messaging people or, you know, whatever. And it turns out that all of the things that, you know, their upline, who probably has a large social media following or is part of a big church or something like that, the things that that upline does to achieve the success, the p putting in the work part, is something that, like, their downlines can't do. Like, putting in the work is such a non-specific term, I guess. And it's just like, oh, well, I work hard, so that's why I have an, a successful business. And it's like, that's not how it goes for most people. And you probably either got in early or you had a good following, you know, something was right in your life, in your circumstances that made this happen for you. Maybe even it's a personality thing, you know? Some people with certain personality traits just do better. Here's another video from the same lady. So I'm addicted to this, um, not in a literal medical sense, but I don't think I could live without it. 
it looks like wherever she's at is not a place that she is in normally. So suggesting that she may be like on vacation or something like that. And she's just like, oh yeah, I get to work from wherever I want. It's like, okay, yeah, we hear that all the time and they think it's a flex. But uh, how about when you're on vacation, you just don't work? How about that? You go back home after vacation and then you get back to work. How about that? <laughs> if money can't buy happiness, I would like someone to explain this. Her caption says, I might have a slight obsession. You think that wall of essential oils is thousands of dollars, yet somehow you have all of those oils. Did you need all of those oils in order to be happy? I don't think so. It's a pretty big investment for your happiness, dude. I don't know, I just think it's really gross. But this lady has other videos too. Oh, and she also uses the hashtag crunchy mama, so there's that. <laughs> I wish I could be creative. Oh, sweetie, you are. You, you have a great talent for creating difficult situations. I do. Sure. Did she just put essential oil on her earring? <laughs> These people are so fucking wild. Like, I, I guess I, I get it. Cause then like, I mean, it's kind of near your face. So if it's swinging around all day, maybe you'll get some whiffs of it. But it's like, it's almost like that lady in the Zoom call with Jacob Young, who was like, oh, I put essential oils on my shoelaces. It's like, why? Why do you do that? <laughs> it's so stupid. The caption says that these are absorbent earrings. Are those a thing? I know that you can get like necklaces that have like a little felt something and then you can put oils on it and then it like diffuses scents all day. Like, is that what those earrings are? She put it on and then it didn't drip off. So the caption says, these earrings are handmade by a group of women in Africa and are intended for essential oils. Aren't they amazing? Okay, so like how is the average Joe gonna get them then? Like, where did you get those? I've never heard of absorbent earrings. I don't know. Maybe you can just buy them online or something. It's so strange. And here's the same lady again. Okay, Natalie, say it with me. We, we don't, don't need, need it. it. We don't need it. I want to get it. When the whole essential oils website is on sale. We saw your wall of oils, ma'am. You've already spent thousands, plural, of dollars on essential oils. Like, what more do you need? Why do you need more? And it's shocking to me that there are people like this all over Young Living who just like binge buy these oils. Like, it's literally an obsession with some of these people. She jokingly said that this is an obsession, but like, please, we all know you're in too deep. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Young Living is shutting down in Brazil. Almost like, oh, I don't know, they're operating at a loss? <laughs> what? Who knew? They can deny it all they want, but it sounds like they're definitely trying to cut corners somewhere. They released a statement. Let me see. I can read it to you. Well, they opened it in 2019, so it lasted three years. Okay, so here is the statement that Young Living made about closing in Brazil. Young Living announces strategic restructuring. August 12th, the experience of a global pandemic and everything that came along with it created a necessity for most businesses to reevaluate ideal conditions for sustainable growth. As a leader in our space, Young Living is no exception. To continue our global mission to bring essential oils into every home, that'll never happen. We've begun making necessary adjustments to strategically align our resources and focus on core business operations. To best move forward, in this new, very different world, Young Living will continue to monitor key performance indicators across all of our international markets and make necessary business decisions in the best interests of our brand partners, customers, and employees, including reducing force and optimizing our inventory. Yeah, they actually, they laid off a ton of people this past year too. I think they just had another wave of layoffs too. In addition, while it's far from an easy call, we made the strategic decision to suspend operations for Young Living Brazil beginning September 30th of this year, with the last commissions being paid in October 2022. We take pride in our ability to adapt, learn, and grow. By lowering our operational spending now, we will secure our position in today's uncertain economic environment. Keeping Young Living on the trajectory of continued growth is part of our deep commitment to empowering entrepreneurs worldwide and delivering essential oils to every home in the world. So I wonder why they chose Brazil. I mean, it must be the branch that was bringing in the least amount of sales, I guess. But it's just shocking to me with how badly they price gouge 
much. Like, we all know. I mean, we were just looking at a $75 bottle of oil from Young Living, and that's not even the most expensive one. There are some over, like, $120. It's fucking wild. I mean, you can get the same essential oil for, like, a third of the price from other places. Regardless, like, with how much they price gouge, and how many people, like the lady we were just watching, who have clearly spent a shitload of money on essential oils, it's, like, shocking to me that they're still having financial issues to the point where they have to lay off a lot of their corporate employees and I think they're cutting out some of the products that don't sell as well at least that's what Mary Young said even though Jacob said he didn't want to do that I don't know I'm sure they'll go with whatever Mary says because she's the CEO I'm like where's all that money going and clearly you had a sales force that big for a reason so like suddenly you don't need all those people anymore so that makes me wonder like if they're just really experiencing a lack of business did a lot of people quit Young Living I'm starting to think they did I think Young Living is really suffering I think they have been for a few years but then also like during the pandemic you would think that like Young Living would have been one of the companies to do well because let's be honest people were selling Young Living essential oils essentially in a roundabout way as a cure to COVID a lot of them were not even a roundabout way a lot of them were just straight up saying it but you would think that that would have made their business boom that and like all the people who kind of had to go on unemployment and stuff the pandemic times were a very lucrative time for MLMs because they preyed on people who had lost their jobs due to the pandemic so maybe like all those people are just finally leaving now they finally realize that there's no substance to this business uh, everything they were promised was a lie and they are in the hole and they're out more money than they were when they joined so that's my opinion and that's what I I think is going on they're blaming it on the pandemic which you know it doesn't really make sense because they like to say they own all their farms and like all the equipment and stuff and it's like okay if you own the farms and you're like growing the plants and stuff like that then why do you need to raise your prices <laughs> It's not like you're importing that shit from someone who upped their prices. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of like unanswered questions here. It's really interesting. Speaking of Young Living, here's just another stupid thing I found that is an MLM pitch disguised as a DIY craft. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, as you can see, this woman used a Ningxia Red bottle and turned it into a fucking cup. <laughs> I mean, you could have used anything, dude. Don't tell me you've never had a wine bottle in your house. Also, like, you're cutting glass. Like, can't that be dangerous? When you put it under ice water like that, does that, like, make it not sharp anymore? I can't imagine it does. You'd probably have to, like, sand down the edges too, right? Or you would just cut yourself. It's, like, straight up cut glass. She didn't show that part. <laughs> she just threw a bunch of Ningxia Red in the cup. I don't really have much to say about that one. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I thought it was just, like, a really badly, like, thinly veiled advertisement. Okay, here's a silly one. I saw this a couple weeks ago. So this might be old news by now, but this is, I think she's like the oldest Mane market partner. I don't mean oldest like age. I mean like she was like one of the first people in. So obviously she has a huge team beneath her telling us how to be successful in Mane. Look professional. And you guys, that means that you, are, when you're in a room, you're making eye contact. Very important. And when you're looking at someone, you know what, don't look around, don't look down, don't look at your hands. You need to, you know, look them in the eye and a firm handshake is a plus when you are out there and you're dressing for success. So handshake. The other part is, you guys, I'm telling you, you gotta smile. That is part of dressing for success. And the other thing is, you have to have great energy. So let's say that you're going to an event and it's in the evening and you had uh, a rough day, well, you know what, I, seriously, there are power stances that you can do to get yourself in a good mood. Just start smiling, look at yourself in the mirror. This is a power stance, right? You have to be in a good mood in, or, in order to meet prospective new clients, new business partners, and to have a great time. Wow, I feel powerful after that power stance. Wow, <laughs> a few things. First of all, her first thing that she's like, dress professional. And obviously I'm not gonna hate on anybody with colored hair because I'm <laughs> hello, but she has purple hair. Most places would say that that's not a professional hair color. Not only that, like what is she wearing, LuLaRoe? <laughs> 
What are those pants? I don't necessarily think that she's dressing professionally here. One of the things she says is to smile, which she doesn't do a single time in this presentation at all. And then great energy and her excuse for great energy is just go like this, get in the power stance, right? Ma'am. Like, I think you have to practice what you preach, sis. But there's just a bunch of people in here are like, yeah, great. I agree. This person in her comments is like, when I shook your hand in Vegas and told you I'm on this person's downline, you pulled me in for a hug. I immediately felt like family. Okay, that's not professional. You don't just like hug people that you've never met. <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, people have boundaries and stuff too. So like maybe don't do that. Doesn't sound like she's practicing what she's preaching. All right guys, I think that is a good place to end it our top fails number three video for the books as always guys keep sending me stuff that you find i have a link to my google drive in the description of every video i post so uh if you find something that you want to send to me that's the best way to do it but some of you guys sent me all that stuff on instagram or just like shared a reel with me sometimes that doesn't work because you know people be blocking me but the ones that don't yeah i can see them just fine so uh yeah instagram is a good way to get them to me too but yeah the more you send me these, the more we can go over them together. So I appreciate those of you who sent stuff in. Now let's say thank you to my YouTube members and my patrons. The list of people I'm about to name off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private discord server. We have a postcard club. You get early access to videos. They'll get early access to this video and more. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie, or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my YouTube memberships. Whatever works for you works for me. So with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Amanda Shannon, Katrina Rosemarick, Cecilia Dudek, Christy Taylor, Elizabeth Wyatt, Eve Blondo, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Meredith Nakata, Raya Mew, Sheila Tapia, Turd Ferguson, Alice W, Amanda Shannon, Boris Geller, Caroline Reed, Casey Scraper, Daniel Urena, E. Higgins, Jerry Duncan, Hannah Morrison, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Haw, Julia Wheeler, Kim Cartwright, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Tuesday the 13th, Blazed Goddess, Martine Hubert, The Best Elephant, Aaron Sings, Jessica Billhart, Carol Jenks, Rebecca88, Colin F, Laura Jensen, Mitchie84, Vegan Chicky Nuggy, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, Kazzy, Auntie Lou, Little Birdie, and Fallon Lowry, and to the rest of my fabulous financial supporters. Thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thanks for making it to the end of this video. YouTube loves watch time, so it just means a lot that you guys are here with me. Keep making waves babes and I'll smell you all later mommy tsunami out